right, guys, here we are. Game number three is on Metropolis. It looks like there's something funky going on with the map, but whatever. <laughs> We're just going to roll with it. It's going to be cool. Don't worry about it, because down at the bottom of the map, we have our winner from last game. It is our blue Protoss player from the team, Tai Lu. It is Jim. And at the top of the map in the red from the Team Dream, we have our Zerg player trying to battle back and get the lead again in this best of five. It is F91. That's right. And guys, these uh, these maps were created on the Chinese server, uh, potentially with some elements that caused the uh, map editor to bug or something like that. So param pay no attention to the Pram value DF1B566E oh, in the corner. They need to hook up with uh, female slash unit slash Ursadac calf how oh, about unit slash name slash supply depot, depot lower but it's a mineral that has the icon for destructible rock what? i'm thinking that what's this going may, on i'm thinking that this may be another bug that this actually is a lowered supply depot if this oh, were played be. on the chinese server oh, could which be. is why they were able to walk through that before and it just I looks really weird we're just in some sort of like weird twilight zone just wait for the critters to start turning into like little giant <laughs> floating jim rayner heads or something like that i fully expect this gsl hey. to have mars tv over it instead i'm like i feel now every time we see one of these maps i have to scout for the i know Mars where's, TV the, where's sign. the logo it's where is it at i don't think it's on this one. Oh, i would be shocked i don't it doesn't look like it's on this one so I, you i'm holding out hope well we'll find oh, well. out maybe maybe later nope not yep. not on it destructible rocks on there instead of a creep tumor this time around all right i feel slightly distraught but we do have pool first coming up for f91 that's pretty normal zerg play so i'm feeling less distraught now yep. and a forge jumping up at the front now for Ty Lu. kind of a weird pylon placement for jim as well but uh you know he does tend to build his walls in this matchup a little bit differently than some of the other players we've seen as we could notice out, uh, from the game on antigua rather so that's right not a big shock there Getting that pylon down at the natural as well. And uh, the last two games, we did see F91 go ahead and take that third first before the natural expansion. Yes. Didn't end up hurting him at all, so I'd say it's a, a fairly you know valid option in this one as well. But it looks like he's going to go for Lings this time around. That's right. Interesting. So as uh, he already sent over his drone, no, he has not. Just picking away at the pylon as long as it can. So uh, we'll see if he has a little bit different strategy in mind. Yeah. Jim, though, has done nothing different at all. Um, full walling off at the front here. This is another one of those maps like Ohana where you can full wall this, easily take down the destructible debris and go over to your third. Um, nice and safe, so we'll see if he does that or if he has a little bit different thing in mind. Well, the choice by F91 to go ahead and make some links and take out the pylon is is no doubt a reaction to the map. On this map, it legitimately would be very dangerous to take your natural expansion here, just because not is it uh, not is it only a long way away distance-wise, but it's down this kind of ramp, it's through this narrow choke, you have to go all the way around the corner, you're just not going to get the destructible rocks down early enough in this matchup to have it be safe, so yeah, Definitely a better decision to make those Zerglings get your hatchery a little bit later and just kind of live, you know? Now, sometimes we'll see players, as this probe is about to die, get there, get to the third. No. no. Um, sometimes we'll see players, of course, uh, drop down a gateway or something like that on top yeah. of the pylon just so it uh, blocks this hatch for a little bit longer. This would have been one of those scenarios where it wouldn't have been too bad because uh, his opponent decided not to go for the third for so long. If he had been able to drop down that uh, gateway, and delayed this hatchery by another 35 seconds or so, he would have actually been sitting on two bases, chrono boosting up probes before his opponent ever put down a second hatchery. And that would have actually been worth the 37 mineral investment to uh, start building and then cancel a gateway. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what Protoss players are kind of willing to sacrifice in terms of blocking the Zerg hatcheries too, because you are using resources that you do, you know, legitimately need at home at that point. You do things like delay your own wall, delay your nexus, sometimes delay your forge to do things like that. So yeah, that's it's always been a kind of a big debate of how much blocking of the Zerg expansions is is really worth it, you know? And we'll see um, what F91 is going to move in here in a second. Uh, he had been putting down his gas on 40 supply. We'll see if he decides to do the same thing here in a second. There's 40 and no double gas quite yet. OK, there we go. OK, so basically, even though it's a little bit different timings of the hatcheries, basically the exact same build so far. Yep certainly appears to be that way plus one on the way from jim as well so he's going to be able to uh, possibly do some sort of early push to take advantage of that plus one it's getting that twilight council again this is uh, pretty much the same build that we saw him do last game on ohana well that ended up working okay but 
Yeah, this one doesn't have the additional two gateways oh, with you're it, right. though, or which gas. is... Yeah, it, never it's, mind. Like, it's like each game he's been getting the Twilight Council earlier and earlier, so he yeah. started with six gate into Twilight Council last time, uh, or first game. Last time he put up two gateways, or had three gateways total, and then Twilight Council. This go-around, he started researching Blink before he ever started with those gateways. We may be looking at that very powerful uh, gateway uh, all in here. Yeah. I was paying more attention to Zerg, I guess. <laughs> My bad. No problem. Zergling speed on the way now for our Zerg player, F91. He also is getting that Roach Warren, too. You really, really need to be ready to defend early on in ZVP because the Protoss will generally come at you with a pretty strong gateway force. If we go back and kind of look at the choke, by uh, F91's base, it is fairly narrow there. And even if we travel a little bit down from there, uh, it doesn't really get that much better. I mean, you have kind of the, the wider, quote unquote, running paths, but it's still an area where force fields, even though they may not be able to wall it off completely, can really do a good job of splitting up your army into very manageable chunks for the Protoss player. And let's see here now, macro hatch coming up. So F91 going down the exact same path. And Jim really doing something different. Of course, that familiar seven gate blink. It's yep. always so annoying for, uh, with plus two as well, always so annoying for Zerg players to try and deal with. Full wall back at home so he won't die to a counter attack. And we'll see if he does enough damage to uh, to really make this worth it. I mean, with this sort of a build, if you don't outright kill a base and some economy or kill your opponent, it uh, can be very difficult to recover from. Sure can. Uh, now, one thing that Jim does have going in his favor is that Dream F91 has not yet scouted that this push is coming. He hasn't really been quite as diligent as he should have been, I think, in, ha in terms of having Lings out on the map, looking for this sort of thing. Now he does know, so he'll be able to go ahead and make some more units very quickly, but will it be enough? We'll find out. He was pretty supply blocked there. Had to make seven, I believe, overlords at the same time. So yeah, um, it wasn't the best. He's got a few more finishing up right now with five uh, five roaches on the way. But of course, he went through a lot of his available larvae, which means that Jim has a pretty good opportunity to do some damage here. Wow, and actually poking the natural, not going to that third base. I'm a little bit surprised about this, but I think he just kind of assumes he has a big enough unit lead to go for it. And uh, he, he very well might. I mean, uh, Dream F91 trying to stall for more units to come up. But look at that, just by having that positioning there he can also catch reinforcements coming from the third base as well that's right so this is a this is an interesting position to be in for jim though because i mean he still can do quite a bit of damage but the longer he delays the more powerful his opponent's defense is going to be so it looks like this queen trying to get away will just barely with almost no health left on her wow three health yeah that's basically a hit from like anything even a, a neutral critter could kill that queen if you bumped into her accidentally well automaton can one shot any unit in the game it's that's just what no heard, one really man. mentions it that's right it's dangerous yeah look out for the floating text f91 <laughs> well this evolution chamber is researching plus one being able to take that out would be uh, pretty useful along with this now tyloo jim has to really start working his blink and he is uh, starting to run back with those units he's lost a couple of soccer there oh but he gets surrounded as well has to play everything out which is going to sacrifice his zealots up at the front yeah uh, look at this just no sentries with this army from jim really odd composition normally you do want those sentries to kind of keep this from happening if there are no sentries out jim all he needs to do or all f91 really needs to do is make a, a decent amount of roaches but really focus on zerglings and in this case it's going to end up working out quite well for him all right well there are, how many zerglings are still left on the field still 34 i mean that yeah. is a respectable amount and it's yeah, something sure. that the uh, stalkers are going to have to worry about they're bouncing back home so uh, i mentioned this this could be a situation where Jim hasn't done a lot of damage. He has done, well, zero economic damage. Yeah. I do literally mean zero. Um, and now has committed himself to a brand of play that since his third back for so long, it's going to be very difficult to make his way out of this. Well, he's got a bit of a tech disadvantage, too. I mean, his opponent is going to be able to more smoothly move into higher tech if he chooses to than... Uh, Jim will be able to. So far, though, F91 not really taking advantage of that. He is getting his plus one care pace just to make that army a little bit more durable. And uh, again, having to make a lot of overlords at once. There's the infestation pit. All right. F91 deciding to go for that later game tech. That's right. Popping up outside of his natural as well. So we'll see what uh, what sort of tech math he goes down here in a bit. If we're going to see a spire and eventually hive and a broodlord. Let's see if he's... Uh, Going to do something completely different altogether, though. And uh, yep. F91 starting to roll down the map. He is going to pick off the forward pylons, which is certainly nice, but he's missed a couple of them. He hasn't seen the one that could be close to his uh, to his third. That is problematic because a few DTs sitting there would be pretty devastating. Yeah, I mean, we saw what damage Dark Templar did in the last game, and uh, that 
could be kind of history repeating itself there to a certain extent too. So, or no, that was two games ago that we saw DT's doing damage actually. That's right. Third base now for Jim. So he's going to go ahead and try to expand out of that F91. Really not interested in trying to attack himself. Just instead getting that tech up, getting those Infester upgrades going and continuing to make his ground forces a little bit stronger as well, taking his own fourth. So uh, playing that, you know, pretty typical passive Zerg mid game. Yeah, but I mean, you know, as a Protoss player here, you love to be on equal bases whenever your Zerg player keeps trying to expand. And now uh, Jim is playing down one base basically the entire time. So it, yeah. it's it's going to be difficult to try and overcome that advantage simultaneously overcoming the tech advantage of this. You know, I mean, that's that's pretty rough. So Jim, I mean, he doesn't have to make something happen right now. He can still play defensive and, and uh, attack and have this force come to him to a degree as long as he defends well. But uh, it's going to get pretty dicey for him soon. Well, with no Colossi out or anything like that yet, these Zerglings could be very, very good. And the whole army is sitting at the third base, ready to try to defend. He does have a couple sentries mixed in with the army right now. Oh, but going after the, na the natural expansion gets the forge. That's Wasn't researching anything, but it does help. Yeah, certainly true. And opens up that uh, little bit of an attack path through there as well, where he can uh, backstab with some Zerglings. But it looks like he's going to dart over to the third. There are some units sitting yep. over there, though, so we'll see how long he lasts. And no, going to back out right away after losing about 8 to 10 Lings. Oh, Lings deciding they might want to go in there for a little bit more action, but then deciding against it. All he needs to do, oh, yeah, the Zerglings could run into the main. Oh, he actually doesn't decide to do it. Interesting choice for Dream there. I felt like he had a, go a golden opportunity to just run a little group of Lings into the main and just being annoying with that and then uh, hit the third. But Dream deciding not to go for that. Jim getting a bit aggressive. Oh, and oh, man, F91 not paying attention, getting a bunch of units cut off from his main force. That was actually extremely well handled by Jim there as well because he blinked up and before a single unit attacked and thus caused the trigger to pop up on the map. Oh, and he surrounds the forces as well. So these units have to do damage or uh -oh. they're just absolutely flattened. Um, I mean, Jim handling that really, really well, I have to say. Yeah, Roach is jumping into the main, so he will be able to get some probes, but Jim should be able to get back and defend against this pretty easily. Yeah, just losing a pylon, powering a lot of gateways, actually. But at the end of the day, looks like F91 is going to just lose some roaches. That's right. So that's a really good win for Jim. I mean, that's the kind of win I was talking about before that he absolutely needs, and he found yeah. it. So now we'll see what he does with his newfound time. Three more gateways coming up. He'll be on a total of 10 once again, adding on a forge. I think that's his only forge on the field. So And uh, no semblance of higher tech, though, which is kind of interesting. Just going, as we kind of saw in the last game, with that very, very strong stalker immortal composition. Yeah, um, and I mean, th there's a good reason for that. Stalker Immortal is an extremely potent composition versus Zerg. The Immortal's obviously handling anything with armor, such as that very unfortunate Roach. He's like, can I join? Can I join? Can I? Uh, I'm just going to let him go oh, by. All right. Yeah. Wow. See you later, oh. dude. Okay, passive. He's like, hey, I want to die. <laughs> you guys, Thank you. Like, I can do damage to you. I promise. Oh. That Roach was stupid, man. He could have gotten all the way past the armor. He was like, no, I just want to want to kill I guess so. Congratulations, Roach. Talking You've about succeeded. emo, emo, uh, emo <laughs> units, emo <laughs> players. Well, uh, this is a fair number of Zerglings, and oh, a Fungal actually catching pretty much all of the, the units he wanted to in the form of sentries and immortals there to really start uh, ramping down their shield. That was a really good way to start initiating by F91, but unfortunately, he's not been able to get any units in afterwards. The force fields have been quite good, and despite the fact that most of the sentries and uh, immortals have taken some significant damage, just F91 not able to, to get in there and do the damage he wants. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty scary army for our Protoss player in F91 in big trouble here. Oh, man, just the immortal count is so high every single game for Jim. Really, really doing a good job of playing this gateway immortal style. A lot of spine crawlers there as well. The blink up, he doesn't care. He's got everything he needs to take out the forces of his opponent. That's right. So Jim looks like he's just going to kind of roll to victory here, cutting off reinforcements before they're really able to make any sort of a difference. Yep. So it's a lot of spine crawlers already put up, but it doesn't look like they're going to come in handy, unfortunately. Yep. Some investors there wondering if Jim was going to blink on those, but he decided not to. 30 supply ahead, which is not a position you want to be in as a Zerg player. So I think we're going to see the GG. Blah, there it is. <laughs> GG is <laughs> called. Blah, blah, blah. And Tyloo Jim goes up 2-1, positioning himself.